Greetings, everybody. This is Time Rider. Matchbox number 16C, Scammel Snowplow. I don't know if I would call this an iconic matchbox, but it certainly was popular if the, the availability of castings today is any indication. Based upon the Scammel Mountaineer, this snowplow version got me thinking and on a quest. I wanted to find a picture of an actual Scammel Mountaineer plowing snow. You wouldn't think this hard. Guess again. I looked at literally thousands of pictures of Scamo Mountaineers, Scamo Highwaymen images, and I found bupkis for a really long time. I can tell you that they use this truck for every conceivable purpose from wreckers to ballast tractors. Finally, by the by, if you like looking at great collections of old lorries, check out Cullen Pickett's Flickr page, he's a British photographer, and a website called Last Pictures of Scammel. I'll put links below. As for this casting, I'm going to restore it. So stick around. So this was a pretty good casting. It had been played with a little bit, so it was fairly nicked up, but uh, beyond that it was intact. I mean, uh, the wheels look pretty good, the plow is still on it. Just need to uh, take it apart. The Scammel Truck Company was started by George Scammel in 1921. And like a lot of British uh, motor works went through ownerships and finally it went defunct in 1988. There's a George Scammel who lives in LA. He's an interior designer. Be careful taking your wheels off. You don't want to scuff them up. I saw Juan has a little deal he puts over them to protect them. I thought that was pretty cool. Juan over at Matchbox Resurrection, if you don't know who Juan is. I think I might make one of those. I thought it was a pretty neat idea. And, of course, this has, since it has a tipper, you know, you've got that one pin buried way back in. There was also a George Scammel who was a tinsmith up near uh, Abergavenny, I think I'm pronouncing that right, in Wales. Made tin implements for use by coal miners. I set that pin aside. And I think they call this a hydro sleeve. I don't know why, but that's what they call it. And clean up that post a little bit because, you know, I want it to go together easily. There was also a George Scammel in South Australia, which kind of makes me wonder if there was some skeletons in the Scammel closet or if they just emigrated there. Hard to say. By the way, if you're up near Avergavne uh, in Wales, you should stop at the Walnut Tree, a Michelin star restaurant. And here we go, the primordial ooze. In she goes. A lot of pieces to this. And that's the end of it. Big shake for luck. So once I got it out of the ooze, it uh, needed to be cleaned up a little bit. Uh, and as I cleaned it up, I got it. This casting was just in really good shape. Once I got the paint off of it. But anyway, every every now and again I get a casting that looks really good like this one. And I say, you know what? I need to put it back together for a sec. Which is what I did with this one. And I think I threw this on one of my episodes of the bench. But I couldn't resist uh, giving it a turn here. <laughs> Almost tempted to just throw clear coat on it and call it good. But uh, we'll press on. 
So I'm using all of my helping hands. Well, not quite, but nearly all of my helping hands. And I decided to go with black primer. There's arguments to go either way. But since I use white so much, I figured I'd better give black a turn. How about that? You know, the name Scammel, it comes from Old English, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Scammel, which is a bench upon which one displays meat for sale. We'll give her a little tack coat here. But anyway, it's believed that uh, the name might have originally been used by somebody who uh, worked in a slaughterhouse. The other possible origin I discovered was uh, somebody who lives in a shambles. So I don't know. You decide. Comment below. What does this have to do with Matchbox, right? It's just the things you find when you're doing research, you know? Now, the tipper... I kind of thought that the orange that they used on this uh, was a little less abrupt than what they had on, say, their Mack truck. Uh, creamier was the word that kept coming to mind for me. So I used a lot of white, more than one might normally consider in making this orange and figured that the black primer might tamp it down just a little bit. I was really happy with the end result. I hope you are too. And the decal I got from Black Square. Uh, nice straight lines to cut against. I always put a sponge or something inside the water and then I actually set the decal on that so it doesn't float away. Put a little water on the top of it, get the whole thing wet. Then another thing I'll do is I'll take a piece of just blank nothing and I'll put that in there too. Rather than testing the decal, I test the nothing so I don't accidentally tear my decal and then, you know, decal's ready to come off. There you go. There was a little bump on the face of the plow and I almost filed it off and then I thought, you know what? That was on there originally. I think I'm going to leave it on there. A little bit of Microsol because I'm on a curved, sur a curved surface here. And the wheels, although they were in great condition, I'm going to give them a little clean up. And then uh, after that, I get to try out my new drill press. Uh, clearly, there's some work to be done here. Anyway, go back to where I started. It was dirty and well play worn. But it was a nice casting. Good candidate for restoration. Anyway, let's take a look at where I wound up. So there you have it, the Matchbox number 16C, Scammel Snowplow. There'll be an episode of The Bench following the video for those who like that kind of thing. Thumb up, thumb down, whatever you want, doesn't matter to me. Please keep your comments respectful. This is Time Writer, and I'll leave the light on for you. Hey everybody, thanks for hanging around for this edition of The Bench. You remember this Brazilian charger that I uh, peeled out of the bubble pack a while back? Well, I'm done with it actually, so you'll probably see that video coming up pretty soon. And then uh, this is my uh, GTO for the Three Blind Mice build, which I'm trying to get done before I go on vacation uh, so that uh, I'll have it done in time for the deadline of the 28th. But this will probably be the last time you see this because, you know, we like to keep those things secret. And speaking of secrets, uh, my mystery builder and I are working on our Studebakers. Hopefully, uh, we'll probably have a late March, early April release. I don't know. Uh, I haven't discussed that aspect of it yet. And uh, probably not going to be any additions of the bench when I go on my little vacation. So, uh, anyway... 
I'll be do indulging my other hobby more so than this one. Uh, that's all I got for you. Everybody have a great weekend. I'll see you next time.